Hey there, it's Cheryl Stan once again. We're up to part 10 of the C4 front end crash repair. I'm doing myself DIY. And in one of the last videos, the front bumper, I got that completely cleaned up inside and out. Belt molding removed, all the parts removed off of it. So that's ready to get going for primer and paint. The impact bar here is the next thing I'm going to be working on. I'm really not too enthused to do it, but I'm going to clean this up. And also that bracket on top that's starting to rust, I'm going to take care of that so that doesn't get any worse. So I'm going to get going on that. I'm going to give all this rusted area just kind of a fast rub down here with a wire brush. I'm not going to go overboard on it. I'll be using a rust converting paint. It'd probably be little areas I would almost probably never be able to get into. Or I won't get everything. But I'll just give it a fast brush down. Anything loose. Top to the surface. That should be good there. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get this piece. There's no need for me to send this out and get this like blasted or anything. A little rust converting paint on this will do the trick. If it lasted this long. Then I'll come in with some wax and grease remover. Not a rag to kind of clean those up. Residue off of there before I start hitting them with some of that paint. Wow, this is some powerful stuff. This wax and grease remover, holy cow! Ooh, I just want to be doing this in a well ventilated area. dries very fast. Okay, I'm going to come in here with our rust converting paint. And give this a fast coat. Oh, it looks better already. Slide this one on over. Once that dries, I'll flip it over and do the other side. There. This is the paint I'm using, in case you're interested. And this is all the store really had. And to be quite honest with you, Rust-Oleum, after they changed their nozzle tips, I haven't been really fond of any kind of their spray paint because the nozzle tips would break or they would clog up and I'd have like almost a full can of wasted spray paint. But surprisingly, this is coming out really nice. And that looks about like exactly the shade, kind of like a flat black, just a touch of satin. Like that would be on the car already. So I'm kind of glad I did this. And I'm just going to flip uh, each of these over and just spray this other ugly side and beautify these pieces. One of the crash parts I got was the horn here for the passenger side because it was broken off on the plastic side and the bracket bent up. This one here looks like it's been repainted, like somebody used gloss black. And I'm just going to dust it with that kind of paint, even though I don't need any rust preventative. I just want it to kind of just all match. Why not? Well, I got it out. Okay. 
not even a minute later. I like the look of that a lot better. Just a quick pass with that kind of paint. And I'll just flip it over and do the same, give her the glossy gloss side. Those headlight buckets had a little bit of surface rust just forming on them. So if I got the paint, I might as well just do those too. I mean, once again, it took 30 plus years to do this, so just shoot on a little paint. It's another you know, 30 years, but why not? It's like to do things right. Here I got the skid. Um, hmm. Looks like that's worn off. Mine were all painted. So I'm just going to give that a quick shot of the black too. Why not? trying to think what else what else what else can I shoot with this wonderful paint while well, I've got it out and the nozzle still working on it I've now got all my parts painted I can put these buckets back in the headlights these didn't need any kind of rust converting paint obviously because these are aluminum but I only painted about the back three quarters of them this is still the factory color and it blends really well I mean it's so close to the factory color on these brackets here it's kind of like wow I mean, this stuff worked a little better than I expected it was going to. I'll work on getting those bolted back on the nose. Here I'm just cleaning up the bumper and surprisingly, I'm using this heavy duty engine degreaser. I'd never use this on paint, but I need to get this cleaned up. It's one of those other parts I touched. I'm getting dirty. And while I did this half, I still have this half to do, and I want to get off all that OPF. If you're wondering what I mean by OPF, I call that other people's funk. This has also helped me too and see of you know what I'm working with here. And here's another good example of how if I didn't get that belt molding off, that the black wouldn't continue on down through here and you're going to see it. This bumper has been repainted. This white here is probably the original white of the car. I can see where this kind of white drops down at the edge. They painted it with the belt molding on the car. I just want to clean it up, you know, so I'm not handling it and getting dirty again. And it'll help me, you know, know what I'm working with as far as a, you know, baseline of the part, what I'm starting with. And I did that whole right side of the uh, fender cover. That took me about 15 minutes. So to do the other side is going to take 15 and then I got to flip it over and do the inside. So it's going to take me about an hour just to clean just this part. I swear I feel like I clean more things than I'm actually working on stuff. But I got to do it because I want it to turn out right. I want it to come out nice. After an hour cleaning this sucker inside and out. I got pretty darn clean on the inside here. And here's another thing, this bracket here that runs along the bottom. Take a look over here. See how this kind of bulges up? It's because the bracket is bent a little bit. So I drilled out the two rivets that hold it in and I'll just use the one off of my old nose, which is not bent and flat this rivet I'll just put a new rivet in and then when these two bolts are tightened it's gonna suck everything up and it should make it nice and flat again in that area but getting it cleaned out here in the inside of the nose some people might think hey you're nuts for doing this I wouldn't waste my time doing this well there's another reason why too if you see all this overspray all the white overspray that's in the inside you know when I get this painted 
I really would like to have the black covering that up so it doesn't look like, you know, not to say I'm trying to cover up my repair to my car, but I don't want it to look like, you know, I want it to look original. I don't want to look like, you know, you schlock parts off of other cars and this and that. I want it to look as nice as it can. So that's why I'm going through the extent of, you know, pulling these off and even underneath there's a little bit of white overspray. Prob that might be from the factory. It would have to be. This bracket was on there. To clean it up the nose and I think next I'm going to clean up the hood. I'm going to go ahead and take the emblem off the front of this salvage hood. In order to do so I got to spin the hood around because there's a couple nuts that are holding it on from the back side. In the very center there's these two holes. That's where the little speed nuts are going to be that are holding on the hood emblem. It's just a 10 millimeter. Get that on there and I'm going to take a magnet tool and just slip it on underneath just in case if that drops on out of there I can grab it with the magnet tool. Did I get it? No. Well we're still on there just a little bit. I could probably reach it still on the stud. There we go. Pull that out. In case it falls in your nose you can just use this and do that too. I got the two speed nuts off the back and then we're going to flip it around and work the front. Now I got those two bolts out in the back. Oh, I can get this off pretty easy. I don't have to do the fishing line. Uh, a little bit more. Come on. Almost there. There we go. Okay. Get that off. Set that aside. We're not putting that back on. Don't know what I'll do with that. I ordered some bulbs online. These just came in today. The 880s for the driving lights. One of mine was gone, so the other one's good, but I might as well just replace those both at the same time new and keep the other one as a spare. And cornering lights, I got those, 1156. I was missing one of those. And I figured why not just replace the 194s and the turn signals and just do all brand new lights up front. So I'll put these off to the side until it's ready for the time to put everything finally back together. And we're gonna have new bulbs all across the front. Well, I test fit the nose just really quick, just to mainly get it up off the floor. But I'm gonna have to put the hood on first and test fit that before I even think of trying to get this aligned. But before I do that, I'm gonna have to take care of this tie bar here I keep talking about and keep putting off to the very last thing. But that's what I'm gonna have to attack next. This part of it is just pretty much cosmetic. You can see where the impact bar here ends about here so everything from there to the end is um it doesn't touch anything so if i can kind of pound that back straight i would rather just keep that one on there than trying to switch this one on there because well i'm not a welder i don't have a welder so i'd have to farm that out to have somebody switch that piece on and uh that's all for now I'm kind of getting a little tired just doing a couple hours each day. Hope you enjoyed watching the video, and thanks for watching.